I'm here at Occupy Wall Street in Carroll Park in Lower Manhattan. We've been talking all day about what is bringing people to this protest in a few hours from now. You're probably seeing it as we speak. The march is headed our way. Labor, community organizations coming together to show their support of this people's uprising. While a lot of people talk about the feelings behind this and the fury and the frustration that this represents. Our next uh, colleague here is Barbara Garson, an author who has been following for a while the economic realities, not just of our communities, but of our communities as they relate to the global economy. And I guess, Barbara, my first question is, what is our place in the global economy as American workers? Are we even needed these days? It depends what you mean. Our economy is still here. We're still here. Very productive factories are still here. But the people in these banks around us have given up on us. It's a funny time in the world when the left is not shouting, America's finished, America's doomed. But these guys are saying, first they said, hey, I want to make things cheaper. You buy the stuff from me, but I'll move the production abroad. Now they have made us so poor that instead of paying us these last 40 years, they decided to lend us money. And we borrowed the money, buy houses, and that all crashed down. I mean, after all, if you don't have $10 today to buy something, you won't have $15 next week to pay it back with interest, but they lent us the money anyway, because they had the money, they had the profits. So now they're saying, oh, they are too poor. They don't say we made them too poor. They say, they are too poor, I know what, now we'll sell it abroad. The hell with America. We'll just keep our offices here because they're very pretty and because the American government really protects us well. So what happens to our power as consumers? We spoke to Naomi Klein today, of no logo. She wrote the book on consumer activism, among other things, and the susceptibility of even major corporations to um, the pressure of the people who buy their products. Is that pressure no longer effective? And if so, what are we left with? I don't know if you called yourself a consumer. <laughs> I, I, I consumed perhaps more than my share in this world, but I never thought of myself primarily as a consumer. And we all know we're living in a world where we need some more expensive things, security, care from other individuals, but not a whole lot of junk. <laughs> so we're not going to be their big consumers. Um, so I, I never thought of it as a, a, a consumer but rebellion. A, but there was, a way, there was a wave of consumer activism around boycotts and fair trade and um, trying to stigmatize corporations that treat their workers poorly, the Immokalee workers struggle and so forth. Uh, this is very different. It feels like a new stage of movement. How would you characterize it? It's fabulous, but people right now are being accused of being inchoate. That's because they're going up against the most organized, coate, and vicious force there ever was. When people in the 60s said, get out of Vietnam, that was a very minor, insignificant demand. And the people in the offices around us, different people, but same offices, said to each other, people in big banks said to each other, um, hey, do we have anything in Vietnam? Do we have any investments there? And they checked and they said, no. And they said, okay, doesn't matter to me. So we only were up against those smart strategists, the Henry Kissingers, the people like that, who, who were playing games and we were playing games against us and we could get them out of Vietnam. Now we're against people who rule both parties, who don't care, it's not a strategy game, they actually control the economy, and we're saying, we don't want you to do that anymore. You made a mess of it. Of course, they make a mess of it every 50 years or so, but it's very, very basic. And that's why it's no accusation to say we don't have specific demands. If we said, regulate this bank that way, put on Glass-Steagall, what would it matter? That's a demand we're making to a government that's already in the hands of those banks. So they'll, they'll regulate Glass-Steagall, they'll put, they'll put back, they'll regulate this kind of derivatives and they'll do that kind of derivatives. The reason they have to do these derivatives, it's not like a banker says, 
I don't want to invest in anything productive. Let me do a derivative of a derivative of a derivative. They say it because companies that would sell to us workers don't even need their money because they're not expanding, because they're not paying us. Because over the four, last 40 years, they've kind of impoverished or stagnated us. So we don't, we, they're writing us off as consumers. I can't really imagine a consumer movement that, that's strong starting from America. We just have to take over their stuff, which is our stuff. Is that what's happening here? Well, <laughs> I don't. Hope lives eternal. I don't know what's happening here. I think we're going to go through this a lot. I mean, but boy, it's, it feels good, doesn't it? It does. Barbara Garson, thanks for joining okay. us. You're watching Free Speech TV. More coming up.